Hi, in this video we're going to give a proof that the square root of 2 is an irrational number. And I want to do it in a way that's slightly different to the standard proof of this result that I've always found just to be slightly unsatisfactory and there is a, a neater way of doing it. So actually maybe why don't I call this uh, a better proof uh, that the square root of 2 is irrational. Now, what it means for a number to be a rational is that I can write it in the form uh, a over b, uh, where a and b are both whole numbers, integers. Okay, um, uh, b can't be zero because I can't divide by zero. But other than that, I should be fairly free to uh, write the number as I want, as minus three over seventeen, as five over uh, fifty-two. I can choose whichever numbers uh, I want here, uh, and then it would be rational. So, for it to be irrational, it's got to be impossible for me to write it in that way. So we start this proof in the same way as the standard proof, if you've seen it, which is to assume. Uh, actually that it is rational and if I can show that this statement is inherently contradictory uh, then effectively I've shown that it's irrational. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show that uh, start by assuming that it is rational and then uh, uh, derive some contradiction. Okay, so we square both sides and we get that 2 equals a squared over b squared and multiply through by b squared to get 2 times b squared equals a squared. And this is where the standard proof starts saying all sorts of things about you know, uh, a and b can't be co-prime, and it's just, uh, it's not wrong, it's, 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 it's a perfectly good proof, it's just, uh, somehow, it uh, diverts us from the main point, and, and, here, and here it is. So, I've got 2 times b squared equals uh, a squared, and we now just want to think about uh, the structure of these numbers. Okay. So, I'm going to do this by example, but you could easily, once you've done this example, uh, write this down in general. Okay, so let's just say a as a number, like uh, 2 times... 5 squared times 7 times 13 to the 4, this could be any number, right? But I'm writing it down as its prime, in its prime uh, decomposition, its unique prime decomposition. Uh, and then b would be some other number, it could be, again, it could be anything, let's say it's 2 squared times 3 cubed times 17, okay? Um, now, what happens when I square these numbers, right? Well, if I do a squared, what, 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 what this means is that I'm going to uh, just multiply it by itself. So I multiply it by 2 times 5 squared times 7 times 13 to the 4. But of course I could now uh, write this uh, as a single, um, you know, just, just uh, as, a, as a prime decomposition again by doing 2 times 2 is 2 squared, 5 squared times 5 squared is 5 to the 4, and then I've got 7 squared and I've got 13 to the power of 8. So you can see that all of the powers in this prime decomposition have to double. And that would be the same for b. If I do b squared, two, this becomes a 4, this becomes a 6, and this becomes a 2. Right? And in particular, all of these powers uh, are going to be even. Right? So any square number has a prime decomposition uh, where all of the uh, individual primes are raised to even powers. Okay? So let's think about this 2 times b squared. Right? Well, 2 times b squared will just be b squared, but with one extra factor of 2. So this 2 to the 4 now becomes 2 to the 5. So I've got 2 to the 5 times 3 to the 6 times 17 squared. And so the power of 2 here uh, in 2b squared is an odd power. Right? So what have I got here? I've got something which is an, uh, has got an odd power of 2 in it, 2 times b squared. And we're saying that's equal to a squared, which has an even power of 2. Well, that is a contradiction uh, because uh, the prime decomposition of two numbers are unique. So if these two numbers are equal, they must have the same uh, prime decomposition. And in particular, the power of two in that decomposition must have the same index, but one is even and one is odd, so that can't be true. So it must be that writing uh, root two in this way can only lead to a contradiction, so it must be impossible to write root two in this way. And there we go, that's it. Perfectly good, complete proof to make this, you know, into a general proof. Of course, you'd want to write this down in, uh, write these numbers down in general by, you know, doing something right, writing uh, a as uh, prime one to the n one or something, prime two to the n two up to prime k to the n k. But you know, uh, and then a squared would have, you know, twos up here. And you could make exactly you could you could see how that argument generalizes, but there's no really no, no real need for us to write it down formally here. You can see uh, very clearly that that argument generalizes. So a really nice, direct, simple way of showing uh, that root two is irrational 
uh, that doesn't, you know, rely on that just slight trick about uh, assuming things are co-prime and getting a, 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 bit, a bit stuck in something slightly more abstract. Uh, a proof that reveals the structure of what's going on is always what we're looking at. So I hope you enjoyed that and hope it was useful. Uh, please do like and uh, subscribe if so and watch out for more videos in the future.